Hi everyone, I'm Heather Wen, a retired nurse practitioner and the founder and practitioner at Arizona Healing Alternatives. On this channel, you'll find several videos, what I like to call aha moments, where we'll be discussing issues that impact your health. So whether you decide to use Western medicine, alternative medicine, or even a mix of both, I'm passionate about you knowing what your options are. For today's aha moment, we're gonna talk about a really unfortunate thing when someone that you know either really well or just getting to know crosses a line and says something or does something that's so hurtful. How do you come back from that? What do you do? Well, the key thing to that really is responsibility because through responsibility, forgiveness is possible and getting past things is possible, but stay tuned and we'll discuss all those things. videos we have talked about a lot about communication and then in the love series talked a lot about different types of love and different types of things when love goes wrong into abusive categories and into narcissism this sort of thing well what happens when you know somebody and all of a sudden they've said or they've done something that really really hurts so I want to be really really clear in this video what I'm talking about Basically, there are things that it is possible to get over. Even the most difficult and complicated circumstances can be worked through depending on the circumstances. But I am not saying that anyone should ever have to put up with any kind of verbal abuse or physical abuse or sexual abuse, anything like that. Okay, that's not what I'm saying because there are certain circumstances where you just really can't come back from it. Okay, and so that I always encourage you because like I said, I'm not a licensed therapist, I'm not a licensed counselor. I would encourage you to seek help, especially through some situations that we're gonna talk about that can get really complicated and really difficult. All right, so what am I talking about? Well, basically, let's say that somebody has said something or has done something that has really, really hurt, all right? Well, what I love is when my spiritual teacher, Dr. Judith Larkin Reno, talked about some of the first things to ask yourself when something like that happens is this responsibility piece. Whose stuff is this? I love that. It's a very simple question. Whose stuff is this? Is this my stuff? Is this this person's stuff? And then there's a really interesting psychological term called psychologically projecting your stuff onto someone else. What does that mean? Okay, what that means is, let's say there's something inside of you that is really disturbing to you. Okay, so for example, and it may or may not be disturbing to you depending on the person, but let's take one of the biggest things we can think of. Somebody cheats on you. And then all of a sudden that person who's doing the cheating ends up accusing you of cheating to kind of get it's called psychological projecting because what you're doing is you're projecting onto another person what you're already doing because you don't want to accept a responsibility and you don't want to accept the blame for that. Now it's funny when I started thinking about doing this video somebody said to me well Heather if you do this video is it really going to help somebody who's actually not taking responsibility because they're probably not going to take responsibility anyway. <laughs> well I can hope that maybe this video helps somebody get some help with that but at the same time this video then is more for people if this has happened to you, how do you reconcile that? How do you come back from that? Because yeah, if somebody else is projecting that onto you, something that they're doing, it's asking that question, whose stuff is whose? You know whether you're cheating or not, you know whether you said something hurtful, you know that. So then it's this big piece of taking responsibility. It's and difficult I because when you take responsibility, it changes up the dynamic of also needing somebody else to blame for why the situation occurred. So it's really important that oftentimes it's easier to blame somebody else for why something happened or justify why those things happened or why the bad behavior, or why the bad phrase is said. Anyone can justify and say why they believe that they're right in doing the behavior that hurts somebody else but that doesn't fully take responsibility for it. And that's a really, really important thing because you can, you can play the blame game, but the problem is it's really looking at who is responsible for that. And it does hurt when you realize that you might've hurt somebody else. So, so there's actually a pretty funny story when it comes to projecting stuff onto other people. Okay, so first of all, 
it's what's going on internally in that person. So there's a very funny story I grew up uh, hearing about somebody whose car broke down on the side of the road. So their car breaks down on the side of the road and they need to borrow like a jack to jack up to, to change the tire. And they're out in the middle of nowhere and they see this farmhouse way in the distance. And as they're walking, they're nervous. They don't know if that person will be receptive. They don't know if they'll receive a no answer. They don't know anything like that. So they, they keep in their mind, this whole thing is playing in their mind, right? Of, oh my gosh, I'm gonna get up there and the person is going to be angry with me for knocking on the door, it's the middle of the night and they're gonna be upset with me. So they start going through, it's called ruminating in their head of this big story about what's gonna happen. What's gonna happen is I'm gonna go up there, this person's gonna be mad and they're like having this whole dialogue as they're walking the mile to go to this farmhouse and they're walking this whole thing and they're so upset and oh my gosh, I know they won't say yes and this is just ridiculous and they, they walk up and find, they're so worked up, they walk up to the front door, they knock on the door, the, you know, the person who lives in the farmhouse opens the door and then it's like, just keep your darn jack, and then walks away. Okay, well that seems like a funny story. Oftentimes this projection of things that are going on in our head, things that may not even appear in evidence of what's really going on in the situation that we work ourselves up as to what someone's gonna say and what they're gonna do, that oftentimes that's where psychological projection can come from. But either way, what's so important is we have to know this is an attack on somebody, whether it's a verbal attack, whether it's an attack on somebody physically, which like I said, there's no excuse for ever, you know, putting your hands on somebody else or physical abuse or sexual abuse, things like that. It's truly, you're responsible for your own life and what you do with it and the stories that you tell yourself. And I found this wonderful article about this that I'll put in the little uh, description piece, a wonderful article that walks through, hey, when something wrong happens, then is said or done, then how can you possibly come back from that? Now, truly the only person who can answer that question is you. You have to personally step back and decide, is this something that's just so out of character and so strange that you can't come back from it? Or is it something where you can seek some help, both of you seek some help? And this can be with a friendship, a romantic relationship, it doesn't matter. It can be even a family relationship. Is this something that you can come back from or not? And you're the only person who can truly answer that. So really go deep inside yourself and figure out, is this something that I wanna get past? I can forgive, but that doesn't mean I wanna still be in touch with that person. So that's really, really important. All right, so when we talk about responsibility, one piece of that that I want to discuss is we've talked about in prior videos about adult cognitive, meaning thinking responsibility, taking responsibility. And many times in Erickson's stages of development, this is a psychologist in the Erickson stages of development, very few on. adults make it to that adult cognitive reasoning phase. What does that mean? That means that they take responsibility for their actions that you may inadvertently not mean to, or you may purposely, so you have to know that as it's conscious or subconscious, and that goes into hypnosis stuff, <laughs> basically. Did you purposely say something because either you were hurting and wanted to push somebody back, push somebody away, or did you do something, like I said, did you cheat on somebody, did you lie to somebody, these sorts of things that, that you have to take responsibility for your part of it. Now I know for myself, I've been guilty of the opposite where I actually overly take responsibility. It was a coping mechanism for me growing up where, ooh, if I took the responsibility, then all of a sudden the thing was solved and I'll solve everybody's stuff. Okay, that's just as bad. If you overly take responsibility for stuff you didn't do, or if on the other end, you've done something, and even if you didn't mean to do it, you've gotta take responsibility for what comes out of your mouth and what your actions are. And that's some of the first thing when it comes to addictions, and we've talked about addictions in other, uh, in other videos, is one of the first things, like in some of the 12-step programs, let's say Alcoholics Anonymous, where they say you have to go to the person and apologize. And apologize doesn't just mean, look, I'm really sorry. Okay, you can tell the difference between when someone is really feeling remorse for what they've done or they're not. And that's one of the things we'll talk about in this article that I thought was so great is, is how you apologize is just as important as doing the apology and actually meaning it. So now, what happens is there's a lot of stuff out there with psychological projection. There's a lot of stuff out there with people not taking responsibility. So let's go through these seven steps. 
And what's really important is that I've put up some slides here and some of them are just gonna be kind of paraphrasing the article, but I have put the link to the article um, first in the first slide, I'll show it right now. And then also it'll be in the description part of, for the YouTube video itself so that that'll be more where you can click on it and actually go there. So step one is to acknowledge internally. So what does that mean? That means that the offender must admit internally or inside themselves what they did was wrong or hurtful to another person and then choose to correct it. So what does that look like? Well, that just means that inside that person who's done the offense, inside that person, they have to know that what they did was hurtful or what they did was wrong and that's just to admit it to themselves because if you can't admit it to yourselves oftentimes what people do with that is they go ahead and they just try to fake that step they go okay well it's okay and i just want to go straight you know over to to saying i did something wrong and then kind of faking it through the different steps and when you do that what you're really looking for is for that person to actually just jump to the forgiveness to forgive you and so you really can't skip that step you have to go internally and know that that was wrong and that was hurtful, which oftentimes it hurts to admit if you've hurt somebody else. So that can be very complicated, but it's a very, very important step. So now let's go into step two. Step two is to confess to another. So what does confession mean? What does that mean? Well, it means that oftentimes the offender, what they really, really need to do is they need to go to another person that they trust, whether it's a friend, it could be a counselor, it could be a mentor, it could be if it's an addiction sort of thing, it could be in an AA group, that they actually have to admit and confess to somebody else that they did this to the person who's the victim. And in doing that, oftentimes many people wanna skip this step because it's embarrassing to say, oh wow, I said something or I did something that really hurt somebody else. That's really hard to say, but oftentimes it's really necessary because when you tell another person the thing that you did, they can oftentimes give really important feedback for you to understand how hurtful it was. And it is embarrassing, but it really gives that person who did the offense a really good understanding of the severity of what they've done so they truly can be fully responsible and accountable. So this is a very, very, very important step. The third step is to admit that that what you did um you can't just say gee i'm sorry and i that's what i love about this in the third step it says i'm sorry for all the hurt i caused you however is not sufficient because it is it's a way to dodge responsibility because there's nothing specific to hold the person accountable rather the statement should be i'm sorry for verbally assaulting you by calling you a name we need to get specific why is that because then oftentimes when we say our sorry, we want the other person to say, oh, that's okay. It's not okay. That person has to accept full responsibility and sit with that. It's almost like when kids do something wrong and they end up in timeout or they do stuff like that. They really have to learn from that, that it's not okay. And we've talked about that in other videos, that it is not okay for you to take your little red wagon of stuff and throw it onto another person just because they love you or they care about you in any situation. You need to be giving the person that you care about even more courtesy than you'd give a stranger on the street. So very, very important with that and how that sorry is done. The fourth part is declaring this understanding, okay? So if we look at that, it says, during this confession, it's important to state how the offense hurt the victim. For instance, you look sad when I called you that name accepts, res accepts responsibility for a hurtful emotional response. Refusing to state that a painful remark caused unnecessary sadness opens the door for the wrongdoing to be blamed on someone else or something else. This step demonstrates a level of empathy for the victim, and I would say for the receiver of that, that is essential to repairing the relationship because you have to understand where they're coming from. And we've talked about, you know, in the communication videos, somebody has to feel that the other person who did this understands. For example, if someone cheated, it would be, I understand that this broke your trust, that this was something that was not okay, that this broke your trust, and I can understand how you'd be angry with me, how you'd be sad, how you'd be upset. That's what that language sounds like. So if you look at step number five, I like to call it building a boundary or build a boundary. And this is where, this is a really important step that the offender says that, you know, if I do this again or whatever the behavior or whatever the words were said, that then they can say, I understand the consequence will be this. 
Well, the issue with that is it's very important because it shows an awareness that this was severe and that there are consequences to it. But oftentimes, if the offender themselves is the one who's saying, well, my consequence is this, then they're trying to control what the outcome is, and that's not okay. What this is trying to say is, when the offender says something, the victim gets to decide what the consequence will be because it's the consequence in their mind and the severity and the importance to the victim themselves. I always tell people don't pull the death card. And what that means is to not go there and say this relationship is over unless you mean it. And in cases of cheating, in cases of being accused of something, in cases of even name calling sometimes, depending on what the name is, then be serious about it. Don't just use that as a manipulative tool to get the person to go through these steps of responsibility. That's not okay. So it's very, very important that those consequences of that, if that person looks at you and says, well, I don't know that I can never do that again. Well, and I realize when you come to an addiction sort of thing, an alcoholic will say, you know, one day at a time. Yes, it's one day at a time. But they realize that if they do that again, there's consequences to those actions. I understand that somebody can't say, well, I can't promise, but that person can at least look at you and say, every day of my life, I will put a check on that. And I understand that if something like that ever happens again, I understand why this relationship would be over, whatever it is, friendship, spouse, whatever, doesn't matter, partner, doesn't matter. Then six, give it time. With any offense, the person who's receiving this needs adequate time to believe that the change is real. This is kind of the proof aspect of it, right? Where basically what happens is trust is built again over time. So a good example of that is in the cheating example. The person who has done the cheating, once they've accepted responsibility, gone through all the steps, they have to understand if the other person who's been cheated on needs to look at the phone needs some accountability and needs time to heal from that. It can't just be like, well, are you over it yet? Are you over it yet? What, you need to check my phone again? Yeah, and if that person needs to check that phone or whatever they need to do for the rest of your life, that person who has done that cheating has to know that that's okay because you have to be responsible for you broke the trust. And if that person is willing to give you another try at it, then you have to be willing to do whatever it takes in their mind to do that. Now that's different from if someone's been cheated on and they can't get past it and now they're, you know, all the time, you know, are not going to trust over time even when trust been, has been proved. That's a different issue altogether and that's a whole nother video. Okay. So that's a very important step. And last is the seven, be accountable. Both people have the right to question and the follow through and the trust. The willingness to be accountable to another pe person for actions and behavior demonstrates maturity and responsibility. A break in the step indicates a person has not truly changed. So what does that mean? That means that truly responsibility is the key and accountability and consequences to actions. I think that there are many situations that people can get past in the long run. I think that's true. But there are some things that cannot get past. It, for example, like I said, if somebody all of a sudden hits somebody else, that is it possible to get past that? Yes. However, I understand if somebody can't, also if it's a dangerous situation like abuse situations like we talked in other videos. However, in cases that, that doesn't mean that they aren't bad cases, can there be a path back to forgiveness and healing and healing that hurt? Yes, but the only way that is possible is for two people, <laughs> I look like four, for two people to actually accept responsibility, not overly take responsibility if it's not yours, to stop the projection, to actually go through those seven steps, and then please get help. Oftentimes it's important to get help from a life coach, a psychological counselor, a psychiatrist, psychologist, to walk people through those steps, even if it's just a friendship, but in, in a relationship, couple relationship, romantic relationship, please seek out that help to walk you through those steps because it is possible. It is definitely possible, but is it something you wanna do? Just ask yourself that question. I hope that this has been helpful. I know it was a difficult subject. I hope this has been helpful to you. Please feel free to leave comments in the comment section and I'll be happy to answer those, any questions that you have.